Lego try not to milk a trade and make continuous videos about it for the next few days challenge impossible. I know that's kind of how it appears, but when you have a move like what we had seen yesterday, Bo Horvat to the Islanders for Bavillier, Ratu, and a first, this is a trade that you can have conversations for days about. And what I wanted to do in this video was talk to the Islanders fans out there who are checking out on what exactly it is Bo Horvat is and trying to figure out what they can expect out of this player. Because sure, we did go over the brief overview. We talked about Ratu, we talked about Bavillier the first and Bo in yesterday's trade recap video, but there's a bigger conversation to have with each one of these assets. And over the next few days, what I wanted to do was just kind of explore that side of the trade, because of course, if we talk about Vancouver for half the video, that's half the video wherein we don't focus on the Islanders and there's a lot more that we can uncover there, right? So. Today, what I wanted to do was talk about Bo and what he could be, what he brings, and how exactly the Islanders could utilize this player to the best of their ability. So, Bo Horvat going over to the Islanders pretty much is the biggest need that the Islanders had that is being addressed with this type of move, at least on paper. Because the biggest thing with New York the past offseason was that they needed a quote-unquote goal scorer. Lou Lamorello needed to add a big fish guy who could pot the puck in the back of the net. And unfortunately, with the missing out of Johnny Gaudreau, they did not do that. They didn't get Gaudreau, they didn't get Kachuk, they didn't get anybody on the free agent market or in the trade market that is considered a quote-unquote goal scorer. And so, just via points and the numbers alone, you could see that Bo Horvat this season, in the limited sample that he had had, 49 games played with Vancouver, 31 goals, that technically is a quote-unquote goal scorer. He fulfills that. And it's interesting because last season, Bo Horvat posted up his career high of 31 goals in 70 games played. He matched that mark in, what is that, 21 fewer games this season? So he's been on an absolute heater when it comes to being able to put the puck in the back of the net. Tip goals in front, bumper plays. He has got a snipe that actually really is consistent. Like, I didn't realize this until J.D. Burke pointed it out, but Bo Horvat this season was a lot less of a two-way defensively responsible responsible forward and much more of just a north-south sniper that could take the puck on the rush and put it in anywhere outside the hash marks in tight he could dangle a goalie he could snipe it from out far and especially on the power play in that bumper position for the tip goals and the rebound goals Bo Horvat was absolutely deadly in that position so, for the Islanders, who have themselves such a bad power play this year, Bo Horvat, in theory, will go out there and provide a good amount of support in that role. Bo Horvat, I think, has the most tip-in goals in the NHL this season. It's like him and Kuzmenko, who are 1-2, and two, which is very interesting how the top guys are both from the same team, or they were from the same team. Bo Horvat's no longer a Canuck. But, in theory, this helps out the Islanders in their power play because of that touch. However, I wanted to dispel some of the conversation going out there saying that Bo adds a two-way element to this team that wasn't there before, because when it comes to Bo and his two-way game, I was talking about this with a whole bunch of friends yesterday in the Discord, or not the Discord, there isn't a Discord, just a Discord that I'm a part of, because I don't really have one of my own, I tried to manage one beforehand and it was really bad. Very traumatic experience if I do say so myself, but... I was having a conversation with a whole bunch of other friends who are Canucks fans, and we all kind of concluded the same thing. Bo Horvat isn't really great defensively. And I think a lot of Canucks fans will agree with that sort of sentiment, that yes, even though Bo has this reputation of being a defensively responsible two-way guy, if you're a New York Islander fan and you're expecting that, I got bad news for you, buddy, mostly because Bo is a guy that primarily excels with winning draws, and he does that really well. Like, I think he ends off his tenure as a Canuck as one of the top guys in face-off percentage and in face-off wins. He wins a lot of face-offs, but just because he wins a lot of face-offs and he plays on the PK doesn't mean he's a good defensive player. In fact, when the Canucks go out there with their penalty-killing unit of Horvat and Miller... 
by goodness, it's a very, very bad showcase of talent there. The other team is just able to score most of the time. It's like a coin flip at this point, and that's really bad. Miller and Bo are not great defensively. Petey is a lot better in his own zone than both of these guys, and he's a lot more dynamic and more aware of reading the opposition and making the proper reads to break up the play. And Bo, unfortunately, just isn't really of that same mind. He doesn't have that same defensive awareness. Things just kind of go by him. He's in the wrong place at the wrong time sometimes. So if you're thinking of Bo Horvat as a number one penalty killing like center, sure, he may be that. Like, he was technically that for Vancouver, the first line penalty killing center, but he just wasn't good at it. So if you're going out there expecting a two-way guy, Please, just try not to do that. Just use somebody else who's a lot more defensively sound than Bo on your penalty kill. And leave Bo on the power play center spot. Leave him in the bumper because he'll win all the draws, he'll go to the front of the net, and he'll put the puck in the back of the net because of it. Now, I also wanted to say this as well. Bo having this career year of getting 54 points in 49 games played on pace now for 87 points in 79 games because the Islanders have a few more games played than Vancouver, so Bo is on pace to finishing the season with less than 82 games. This is a player who, at the end of the day, has been a career 50 to 60-ish point player every single year. This year, being on pace for 90 points with Vancouver, this was the anomaly year. And so, for anybody going out there and saying, wow, the Islanders got a 31 goal and 49 game guy, they got a 90 point pace player for Ratsu Bavilia in a first, what a steal for New York. You gotta remember that from the Vancouver point of view, Bo Horvat was never really this good, ever. He had spent nine seasons with the Vancouver Canucks, four seasons as the captain, and in each of those seasons, I mean, he had 53 points, 39 points, and 52 points, all in the amount of games that he had had. He was never this good. And so, the Vancouver Canucks trading Bo Horvat of this season away for the package they got, you could say, okay, maybe there's a little bit of a differentiation in value. The Bo Horvat trade saw the Canucks get a package that was not really equivalent to the value of a 50-goal, 90-point player today. But from the Canucks POV, if you traded away Bo Horvat, the 50-point guy like he had been the past few years, a guy who had only cracked 60 points once in total, and that was in 2018-19, every other season he's got 40 or 50 points, in 2021 he had 39, then trading away this guy who was going to demand way too much money on the open market and who is likely going to leave in free agency because the Canucks already re-signed Miller and Kuzmenko, getting a package of Ratu, Bavillier first, big steal for Vancouver. Now, I'd seen some rumors popping up asking if there's going to be another trade, if Bo could get flipped by Lula Morello sometime towards the deadline, and we're going to make another video about that because that is more money in the bank for me. As I've said, man, I'm in the context of self-preserving myself right here because I make YouTube videos for a living. I can't go out there and spill all my cards in one video, but for Bo Horvat, this also is one more very intriguing part that I wanted to highlight as well. He's got 31 goals in 49 games played. Yes, that is the case. However, in his last 10 games, he's only got two goals. In his last five games, he's only got one. In the context of the season that he's been having, Bo Horvat was honestly in sort of a slump goal-scoring-wise the moment he had gotten traded. Sure, if you look at the NHL and you see where Bo Horvat ranks amongst everybody else in the league in terms of goal-scoring, he is still a top 10 goal-scorer. He's 8th overall. But there was a point, like a few weeks ago, when he was right there at number 1, number 2. He was with Connor McDavid. He was with Tage Thompson. He was in that conversation with all those guys of being the best goal-scorer in the league. The past few games, Bo has really fallen off with that pace. Only one goal in his last five, two in his last ten, as we had said. Now he is eighth. So he is, what is that, seven goals behind David Pasternak, ten goals behind McDavid. Tage Thompson has a three-goal lead on him. Okay, that's not really that big, to be honest. But considering that Bo Horvat was a second, first overall goal scorer in this league a few weeks ago, and now he is not, there has been some sort of a drop-off the past few games. And a lot of Canucks fans would go out there and notice that as well. Bo got really snake bitten the past little while here with him missing the net and not being able to find the proper reads to put himself in goal scoring positions. And so 
the Islanders. Y'all are going to have to work with him to get him out of that slump. But at the end of the day, I mean, this is a power play goal scoring specialist that could really help you out in your power play since it's so bad and down in the dumps. But that's kind of what I think you're getting in Bo Horvat. If you're an Islanders fan who stumbled upon this video, hey, let me know in the comments all your thoughts on this player. If you're seeing this video sometime in the future, it's already been a few weeks after the All-Star game, etc. What are your thoughts on Bo Horvat now? Do you agree with everything that I had said over here? Do you think there's more that I didn't cover? Do you think I undersold Bo? Is he better as a defensive center than he was in Vancouver? Thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.